of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We're not making the sign of the cross today. On a day as such, in English it is called Good Friday, but in Aramaic Syriac, it is the Sorrowful Friday. Aruthat Khashya. Sorrowful Friday. It is amazing how God is and how God's love is. When you face such an awesome God and an awesome love, whether you like it or not, you become speechless, dumbfounded. What is this mystery? That's where the scripture says and calls it the great mystery. For it is the great mystery. God, the infinite, the awesome, the perfect, the holy of holies, the everlasting, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, wants us to be one with Him, in Him, by Him, and for Him. How does this God think? How does this God operate? How does this God rule and reign? It is absolutely amazing and mind-boggling that this exalted, elevated God became man, like us. But the problem, we are a piece of dust. The problem, we are full of sins. The problem, we are nothing but a lost soul. This God, where the Holy Bible talks about Him and says that the heavens is not enough place to contain Him. The universe, to us it looks as if it's an infinite space, endless space. The Holy Bible says this endless space is not enough to contain you. Yet this awesome, infinite, mighty God comes to this minute piece of dust and says, My son, give me your heart. How can you live in this heart of a piece of dust? It's a speck of dust. When they sent this telescope, to check the atmosphere of Jupiter. It took four years for this telescope to get to Jupiter. Humans searching for life outside of this realm. They thought there might be life there. As they took those footages and sent them back to Earth, it took about four or five hours roughly to get to earth because of the distance. They realized the atmosphere is nothing but cyclones, wind speed up to six to 800 kilometers an hour. Definitely life cannot exist in Jupiter. So the scientists thought for themselves, it took four years to get there before we bring it back home to earth, how about we turn it and make it face mother earth and take a few snapshots to see what our earth looks like from Jupiter four years of travel away. They took few shots of our earth and send it back. When it arrived to their shocking surprise, there was millions 
of specks of dust on and that picture appearing one of those little tiny speck of dust was earth in the midst of millions and millions and millions they started removing one by one to see which one is earth one of the scientists i remember came out and said accidentally we removed earth out of the picture amazing amazing our god if this mother earth is nothing but a speck of dust then how much more am i the speck of all specks yet god the infinite the almighty comes and says give me your heart you speck of dust because your heart is the perfect place where i choose to dwell in and be in psalm 22 is incredible where it begins with my god my god why have you forsaken me el el ilmanash waqtan when they pronounce it in english they call it eli eli lamana shabaktan it's el el ilmana shwaqtan it continues in verse 6 this is the lord jesus speaking in a prophetic way through king david a thousand years prior to the birth of the messiah king david is writing prophetically the lord is speaking through king david and, and in verse 6 he says i am not a man but a worm i am not a man but a worm when someone hears the lord talking in this way about himself you would say this is not cannot be the word of god how could the lord jesus refer to himself as the worm and not a man but we need to understand what love does we need to understand how far true love goes we need to understand there is no limits when it comes to the true divine love how far this true god can go for your sake my sake and everyone's sake i am not a man but a worm the lord is saying our forefathers cried out to you in the wilderness of the desert of sinai and you've heard their cries yet i your only begotten son hanging on the cross in the flesh i am crying out to you yet no whisper of you my heavenly father because i am not a man i am a worm you know when we step on a worm whether deliberately or accidentally when we step on that worm i am 100 percent certain the worm cries out out of pain and agony because when you crush its body there is a lot of pain caused here and afflicted upon it the worm cried on top of its voice but did we hear the voice and the cry of the worm no the lord is saying i am like that worm when it came to my cry on the cross when they pierced my hands and my feet with those massive nails when they placed that crown of thorns on my head and pushed it so far it actually pierced my head by the way the crown was made out of metal 
wasn't a shrub. The crown was made out of metal and very sharp. That crown could kill an elephant. When they pushed it so hard to fit it on the Lord's head, they literally pierced his, his head. When we come to the scourging, that whip which the Roman soldier used, when you read in history how they used to make it, at the end of it, there was metal balls and some metal, very sharp, like a knife, hooks. It was said to that Roman soldier, if you do not bring blood out of that body with the first strike, a certain amount will be deducted from his monthly wages as a penalty, as a punishment to that Roman soldier. And they were dependent on their wages. So they had to make sure that blood came with the first strike. They would go back maybe 20 meters and come running six foot something muscly soldier Roman soldier six foot something with muscles he would come running full steam ahead and would jump with all his power strikes that person those hooks went so deep into the flesh and then he would pull with his full force, those hooks from the body of the person being whipped. Psalm 129, I encourage you to read it. Psalm 129 describes the whipping of the Lord so accurately as if King David was standing right there and then. Yet it was written a thousand years before the Lord Jesus coming. His body was shredded to pieces. In fact, pieces of his flesh were falling off as he was carrying that heavy cross to Golgotha. That's why he was out of blood, out of breath. He was almost dying when he was nailed on that heavy cross why did you do that he says it's my love now to a speck of dust human being doesn't make sense as so many people say God is too powerful to forgive people from heaven he didn't need to go through all this process to save us all he didn't need to become a human he didn't need to be ridiculed kicked punched and spat on and dragged in the streets of jerusalem and then nailed on the cross fully naked a grown-up adult at the age of 33 and four months 33 years and four months a grown-up man an adult hanging on the cross fully naked it's so embarrassing why did you go through all this lord why he will say it is my love my love it is my love because when you love wholeheartedly you will do strange things you will do weird things you will do things that do not make sense to those who see you. You'll act so childishly. You'll act like a little kid. And people will wonder, is this person fully sane? But we do not understand the concept of true love. 
when we as humans love from the heart when we love someone and I'll depict this in the parenthood when parents love their children wholeheartedly they act like little kids when something happens to their children the mother runs like crazy the father is lost doesn't know what to do my child has a temperature my child is sick we run to the hospital yet we don't look at what we are what we have on is it pajamas are we ready to go to the hospital I don't care I don't care how I am dressed up all I care about my child needs me this moment that's all I see it is exactly how God looked at it God the Almighty created everything with his word the heavens the angels everything the earth and everything in it he created everything with his word except the human being when it came to create the human he said let us go down and make man in our image according to our likeness when he went down to make this man he called him he called him Adam now Adam in the Syriac Aramaic language is Edemta means red mud dem means red or blood red color Edemta red mud so God in order to create us what did he do everything else he created with a word but when it came to us he created us with his own hands and where did he put his hands in the mud who plays in the mud a little kid when you look at a little child playing in the mud you won't get upset or offended or confused because you will know this is what the little kid is capable of they are not mature enough this is all they know but hang on this is God the source of wisdom the perfect God the infinite God the Almighty God how come you put your hands in the mud to create Adam he says it is love love makes you do crazy things when it came when it came to my own child I put my hands in the mud and I looked to my angels as if I have lost it but no love is crazy and love goes extremely far and wide and deep and high this is our God today on Good Friday the love of God is perfectly illustrated on Golgotha Calvary there are four absolutes in life that no human being can ever fully define there are many more but these are the most important ones four absolutes in life that no human can ever fully divine fully define one love two justice three evilness four forgiveness love justice evilness forgiveness no one can fully define them if I ask you what is love everyone will define love in a different way but it will never be the fullness of what true love is all about but there is these four absolutes converged into one and were fully defined in one place called Golgotha the cross on Golgotha God the Father cried out from heaven and said it was that love of mine that created you and brought you into existence the day you broke my word 
my justice cried out needing for justification therefore my son came down he died on your behalf and paid the debt and paid the price for my justice to be fulfilled and when he died on the cross based on love and to pay the price of my justice for the wages of sin is death Adam the day you eat from the tree surely you shall die somebody had to die therefore Christ became the latter Adam and died on behalf of the former Adam out of love Christ died and out of love Christ paid the price to fulfill the justice of God and out of love Christ shed his precious blood on the cross on Calvary to wash away the evilness of everyone who believed in him and accepted him as Lord and Savior and then finally from the cross the Lord spoke seven statements he said seven statements the very first one he said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing forgiveness love justice evil forgiveness were fully illustrated fully defined on the cross by Jesus Christ of Nazareth our Lord and God God bless you and may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth in this holy sorrowful Friday where he suffered immensely by shedding his precious blood and giving his life up for all of us as a token of love salvation and redemption may he be with you guide you protect you deliver you from the snares of the enemy and bring you to the shores of peace and into the kingdom and the house of his heavenly father to be with him forever and ever and evermore amen god bless